fact even in my campus unfortunately during my year the big threes did not come till that time only big fours used to come till 2020 but this year even at my campus at vit my juniors were able to sit for all three so bain and company boston consulting group mckinsey all three came to vit so i think now they are opening up a little they are going to other campuses as well but they are the big threes are a little more stringent and they are a little strict they want stellar academic records you should have 90% and above and a 9 cgp and above all throughout your academic grades good uh, extra curricular activities extra vagrant uh, uh, you know achievements but yeah other than that the big fours and all the other consulting firms that i spoke about mostly at least in the big uh, in the big fours you don't require an mba and the other consulting firms everyone how are you all i'm dhwani from geeks for geeks and i will be the host for today's session so for today we have a very prominent speaker with us uh, i would like to welcome dhairya hi dhairya hi dhwani thank you so much for having me how are you i'm good i'm good i hope you're doing well i'm good too thank you it's really great having you here i mean i read your portfolio i have been following your pages for so long and it's been you know like mm-hmm. it's really mm-hmm. amazing to have you here so for the benefit of our audience i would really like to first take this opportunity to welcome you to introduce yourself sure um so for everyone and obviously the learners uh, who follow geeks for geeks so diligently let me tell you that i used to uh, you know practice a lot from geeks for geeks by the way Uh, when i graduated 2 years ago even though i was not preparing for tech role so uh, obviously gfg i think is the epitome for every engineering student um to introduce myself to all of you uh, i am an ec engineer uh, you know by my educational qualification uh, and for the past 2.7 years i worked with kpmg in india as an associate consultant uh, very very recently i have taken up career coaching and content creation full time which i was doing as a side hustle all this while and um why am i own initiative of dhairya decodes i've been able to impact over 5000 plus students and working professionals i help uh, students with all aspects of career guidance interview prep resume building etc and yeah that's a little bit about me i'm very active uh, creating content on linkedin instagram as well and now on youtube too that's really amazing to hear so most of the times i have seen that once people do their engineering they find their actual passions so what yeah. inspired you to you know like go from that job in engineering to you know like doing something of your own yeah so i think uh, like you said I, i probably i think people just do engineering to figure out what they want to do in life i mean i've just come to that conclusion because i think you discover what you want to do uh in life other than engineering during engineering and after it uh but i think for me um uh, when i was in my second year itself i knew very well that why even though i was performing very well in terms of academics with my core electronic subjects and uh i knew that obviously most of my peers would go ahead and take up these programming roles or these tech roles in the top tech giants and i i obviously did not mind doing that but i knew that that did not come to me naturally and that's when i thought that okay if this does not come to you naturally what are you good at and what are my strengths to figure out what my strengths are and what i am good at i started doing a lot of internships and all the internships that i did were by default in the management space because that is what i was inclined towards naturally without anyone having to force me or tell me a karlo or some senior telling me this is what you should do so i think uh, i did a lot of internships in marketing consulting sales business development or uh, human resources content writing you know i tried everything out because i wanted i knew i had time i was just in second year and i knew i had to figure out what do i want to do in life right because all of my peers seemed to be very sorted with what they want to do and i knew what i didn't want to do but i had to figure out what i wanted to do so it was fairly easy but still difficult so through this course of these internships i actually realized what a consulting uh <clears throat> you know domain is really like because i honestly speaking even today if you ask me most of the students don't even know what management consulting is and that's the reality a lot of people don't even know this is a domain this is a, a professional 
space you can be in uh, right and you can work with big fours or big threes as consultants big four, big three still okay but big fours people think that they are just uh, accounting and taxation firms people don't even know you can be a consultant at a big four so for me also it is very new uh, in fact had i not done one internship which i did with a bangalore based startup as an analyst i would never know that as a fresher you get hired as an analyst in any consulting firm right you start up from the ground level so irrespective of whether mckinsey hires you kpmg hires you zs associates hires you the point is you will get hired as an analyst that's the most basic uh, and the i would say the lowest in the hierarchy when you get started with your career in consulting then you obviously go up to become associate consultant consultant senior consultant team leader project lead and then you become like a assistant manager associate director director uh, then associate uh, you know partner partner and all of that uh, it keeps going up so the point was that i got introduced to consulting and i realized that okay consulting is a domain wherein you solve problems by and large you solve complex problems that your clients face and it's a job that requires you to have good communication skills you interact with people it's not not a normal 9 to 5 desk job where you're just sitting in front of a laptop it's very interactive you get to travel um you get to work in different teams every 6 or 3 months every time you have a new project you have a new team a new project lead a new scope of work so it's very exciting and you get to work on different industries right today I, my client might be a pharmaceutical company tomorrow my client will be a edtech startup day after tomorrow it will be a fashion company so the point is it's very exciting it's not monotonous and that's when i thought that if not forever for a decent period of time i can manage doing this kind of a job so that's how i realized this is what i want to do and while i obviously uh, you know did uh, really well at my job i i went through three different uh, roles uh, in just you know 2.5 years i was in i started as an intern i got to being an analyst and then i got promoted to an associate consultant and while doing all of this i was also obviously doing my own thing which was career coaching and consult uh, you know uh, sorry content creation and that's when i realized that while i obviously enjoyed this side of things uh, just mentoring and coaching people gives me a lot of joy so that's when i decided to take this up full time it's not been very long in fact uh i think it's just been like 3 weeks or so but yeah i think uh, consulting has shaped me into the individual i am that problem solving acumen that you build the way you start looking at things uh, your ability to uh, you know talk to anybody uh, in a crowd in a group and present yourself in the best way possible i think consulting teaches you that so uh, yeah that that's what uh, the journey has been like that sounds really amazing so since you mentioned a lot of people don't know exactly what consulting is i am one of those people so can yeah. you tell me what exactly is consulting sure i think that's a very relevant question i will try to break it down um, for the audience in the most simplified manner possible uh, see you we always say that go and consult a doctor consult a therapist uh, consult somebody the word consult is to go and ask for an opinion ask for a suggestion seek help that is consulting so what you do as a consultant by and large is these big fortune 500 companies right uh, which is almost all the top companies they face problems in their operations not everything runs smoothly every time someone might be facing a revenue problem or a revenue issue someone might be uh, facing issues with hiring the right kind of talent talent someone is facing automation issues some company might be facing a lot of issues with not being able to let's say make enough profits or whatever or they are facing issues with their operations so the problem could be in any area so uh, a company could be facing a problem with their revenue operations sales people automation tech as a consultant what you do is in your niche area of expertise you try and understand your client's problem and you solve it for them you never do it individually you do it with a team of consultants right a consultant never works alone you always work in a team and these client projects that you work on span anywhere between a minimum of 1 month that will be the bare minimum to even 2 years my first client project went on for 2 years right which is the entire duration of my tenure at my company uh, and in the middle of that i started working on another client so client projects are long because these problems these are day to day problems that you and me face that we can solve in a day or a week these are problems wherein companies 
uh, put in crores of rupees or lakhs of rupees and they spend it on these consulting firms and on hiring consultants like us to be able to solve that problem. So it takes time and you can be uh, a management uh, consultant by and large, but management consulting is the umbrella. The branches within it are technology consulting, strategy consulting, operations consulting, sales consulting, marketing consulting. These are all sub branches of the main branch, which is management consulting. So you could be anybody depending on what niche you want to get into. But those are the different kinds of consultants um, companies hire. And uh, that is what consultants do. They solve uh, problems, complex problems, and they make sure that the solutions are cost effective for the client and they're implementable. You need to make sure that the solution that you're providing to your client is meeting their budget also, right? It cannot be over budget because then they'll go to another consulting uh, agency or a consulting firm. And you need to make sure that uh, your solution provided is implementable, it's feasible. It's possible to execute it in the real world. It's going to give them the results they want and it's going to help them. So those are a couple of things that you do as a consultant. Right. So uh, I was just wondering, like everybody says that, and it's it's a very, you know, like known fact that resumes play a very important role in getting the kind of job you're aiming for. So how yeah. does one make a resume which is appropriate for a consulting job? Yeah, I think that's a very good question as well, because I mean, any job you're applying to your resume obviously has to be on point. But there are certain things which are very typical and peculiar for consulting jobs, because they demand a different kind of a skill set and obviously their expectations are different from other companies. So consulting firms majorly look at three things, I would say, over and above other skill sets that you require depending on the job description that the company rolls out. Number one is irrespective of the kind of consulting role and comp company you apply to, they really need you to be good with your communication and people skills. So good communication skills, good interpersonal skills, because like I said, there's not a job where you can just write a piece of code and be on a laptop and not show your face to a client. You have to talk to people every day. Unfortunately, that's how it is. Uh, you need to work with teams. You need to handle stakeholders, CEO level people from your client every day. So you have to have good communication and not just verbal, but written communication as well. That's number one. That's what they look for through your resume, through your experiences, right? Second thing that they really value is good problem solving skills without which uh, I'm sure for any tech role also or to clear any technical interview of any tech company, uh, your syntax of the programming language you're coding in might not be correct. But if your uh, approach is not wrong, is not correct, right? And the way you're solving the problem itself is wrong, you will not get selected. It's the same with consulting roles. We have something which is called uh, case interviews, right? And case interview rounds or case study rounds are very peculiar to consulting companies. And uh, through those rounds and even on your resume, they're trying to look for problem solving skills. By problem solving, they mean they're not looking at the ultimate answer that you come with, come up with or the final figure for that case study that you've solved. They are going to judge you on your approach, the entire approach that you have taken to solve the case. What steps did you take? How did you break it down? If that is not appropriate, unfortunately, you won't get selected. So that's how it is um, similar and analogous to technical interviews as well. So your problem solving skills should show up on your resume. How they can show up is if you take part in a lot of hackathons and case study solving competitions, business case challenges, uh, take part in these kind of competitions because they help you build on your problem solving acumen. And uh, what I would also suggest is that uh, the third skill that they really look for on your resume is around your basic presentation skills and a good understanding of Excel and PowerPoint. Might seem like very basic uh, and something very trivial, but the reality is if you want to become an analyst or you want to get into consulting or today, I think in any job, having a good understanding or your basics cleared for PowerPoint and Excel is very important or you will really struggle in your job. Uh, we feel like, oh, this is just Excel or PowerPoint curling. We learn during the job, but trust me, that becomes the most difficult thing. My managers to even my Associate directors at times, I've seen them making presentations. You have to make pitch decks and presentations and work on Excel as a consultant. So be prepared for it. And that's a skill you need to have. So I think uh, those things should be showing on your resume. But over and above anything, I think just your curiosity to, uh, you know, solve problems, learn something new. Uh, they also really appreciate good leadership and entrepreneurial skills. 
so if you can show in any way that you have done something of your own started something of your own uh, or you have led teams very well they appreciate that so those things are very important on a consulting resume right as you mentioned about excel you know like when when people are not really diving deep diving into it they just th- think of it as something very trivial but once you start doing excel you explore there are so many you know, like there are so many functions that they, you know like that are so Correct. difficult to understand it requires yeah, a lot yeah. of practice i mean you can obviously making dashboards on excel using pivot tables advanced functions vba we just forget excel as a mechanism to dump data or cleanse data at the most or filter it but there's so much more that you can do it's very powerful right so it's very important we stop looking at it as a trivial skill but rather as a life skill today to survive in the corporate world or even in a startup any job you need to know excel very well that's true so what are the top consulting firms in india and what do they do yeah so i think uh, again a very good question why because i think there's not enough awareness around it a lot of people just know the most famous names and the top brands obviously because they're the top brands you should know them but i think a lot of people limit their information to just big 3s and big 4s obviously the big 3s which are mckinsey and company boston consulting group and bain and company they're called the mbbs they are the best and the top most elitist firms to be a part of as consultants for sure uh, we also have the big 4s which includes kpmg deloitte ey and pwc these are the four big 4s right these are again typically known more for uh, being accounting and taxation firms but people don't know that the third arm or the third vertical uh, where they operate is consulting so it's called their advisory arm and under the advisory arm you have all the consulting practices that run across these four big fours uh, but these are just the names that we hear uh, you must have not heard zs associates as a name zs associates is a very good consulting firm uh, they are a uk based consulting firm they've got branches in india and delhi bangalore and pune majorly and um they majorly deal with pharmaceutical clients right but they are doing really well and it's a good place to work at as well so people don't know about that consulting firms people don't know about dalberg people don't know a lot about uh you know uh infosys ibm cognizant accenture consulting they all have their consulting practices these top service based firms also have their consulting arms by the way a lot of people would have not probably heard of adl or you may not have heard of praxis global uh, right but these are all top consulting firms and they are also firms that have got their niche uh, consulting practices that a lot of people don't talk about right all over women it's known for its hr consulting vertical the most so there are a lot of consulting firms that are there um, and these are global consulting firms by the way all of them are not just in india uh, mostly they have their headquarters in a foreign country and they have got their branches um, within india all of them obviously uh, are consulting firms so they provide consulting services they solve problems of clients but everyone has their own expertise you know like the big fours are generally known for tech consulting roles and financial consulting roles because they are taxation and accounting firms at the end of the day so more roles around tax associate tax consultant uh, you know technology consultants like i was a technology consultant so my role was an amalgamation of tech and management I worked on a cloud P2P tool called SAP Ariba. So I was a SAP Ariba consultant, which is a tech consultant. So there, obviously, um, those kind of firms, uh, big fours are known for tech consulting and uh, you know financial consulting. Big threes are majorly known for their strategy consulting roles. They are famous for strategy consulting roles. Oliver Wyman, like I told you, is known for its HR consulting practice. ZS Associates is majorly known for its pharmaceutical clients and for its uh business analyst roles and stuff right they majorly deal with pharmaceutical clients so if you want to get into the healthcare or the health tech space as a consultant and only want to work with those kind of specific clients then zs is your best option to go with if you want to get into social impact consulting then dalberg is a good option right um then uh, what else like i said infosys uh, cognizant tcs these are all uh, service based uh, companies right big service based firms and it based companies that also have consulting arms majorly they are into tech consulting right mostly into tech consulting um yeah so every consulting firm obviously has its major branch or niche what they are known for but at the end of the day they are all consulting firms so they um their clients could be fortune 500 companies or individuals or agencies and they try to solve uh, their problems in that particular niche area 
so yeah uh, that's a bit about the different top consulting firms yeah right so since you mentioned a lot of management related stuff is related to a consulting job so i think a very prominent question here would be like is mba really required for a consulting job yeah i think uh, again this is a big big myth uh, in the industry in the market most of the students in fact even i was put into that uh, box where i was told that you cannot get a consulting job without an mba and trust me majority of the times you can't i won't lie right because i don't want to misguide anybody but the reality is you can right if you have the opportunity and you know how to get there so i think um, it's it you're most likely to land a consulting job after doing mba and it's the most advisable and it's the easiest to land a consulting job after doing an mba because you go through per se a proper management and a functional oriented degree right that's why and consulting firms are known for management practices functional practices and hence they prefer mba candidates but having said that does that mean that if you don't have an mba degree you cannot get into consulting not at all i am an engineering graduate i graduated 2 years ago i got into a consulting firm without an mba that's because i got into a branch of consulting where engineers are required so you need to be smart with what kind of a vertical do you get into i got into technology consulting there are also engineering consulting roles where core uh engineers are required right mechanical engineers having core mechanical engineering knowledge are required by companies by the way in consulting because the clients they deal with are associated to that core field or they require uh biochemical engineers or biotechnology engineers or they require let's say electronics engineers specifically because they come from an engineering background so they grasp over the technology or the technical field is also there plus if you're good at management then you can get into engineering consulting also right so the point is there different branches of consulting um you can get into sales consulting and marketing consulting as well if you have the right expertise and you have applied your knowledge and done internships and have some exposure i got the job because uh, luckily at my campus at vit vellore all the big fours come into our campus every year right and uh, they hire for these tech consulting roles because technology consultants need to have a good grasp of technology and engineers are known for technology that's why you should also look at the vertical i got into it might have been difficult for me right out of engineering to become a human resource consultant hr consultant that it's better you do your mba in hr and then get into it or becoming an operations consultant or a strategy consultant might have been a little difficult as opposed to technology consultant even that i am not saying it's impossible um especially with the you know mbbs i'd like to point out if you want to get into the big threes mostly having like a iit or an iim tag is important you need to come from a reputable and a top tier engineering college or an mba college because yes analysts are also hired from iits and nits and triple its and you know the top colleges uh, for um, analyst roles without any mba uh, mbbs hire them in fact even in my campus unfortunately during my year the big threes did not come till that time only big fours used to come till 2020 but this year even at my campus at vit my juniors were able to sit for all three so bain and company boston consulting group mckinsey all three came to vit so i think now they are opening up a little they are going to other campuses as well but they are the big threes are a little more stringent and they are a little strict they want stellar academic records you should have 90% and above and a 9 cgp and above all throughout your academic grades good uh, extra curricular activities extra vagrant uh, you know achievements but yeah other than that the big fours and all the other consulting firms that i spoke about mostly at least in the big uh, in the big fours you don't require an mba and the other consulting firms you can get into it without it you just need to be skilled at what you do and confident and obviously yes it matters if your campus placements are there it becomes easier because applying off campus to consulting company becomes a little difficult but um, on campus when you apply uh, obviously because your college has tie ups with those companies it becomes a little easier so i won't deny the fact that it will become easier for you if the companies come to your campus yeah right so can you give, tell us about some preparation strategies for a consulting job interview without an mba sure so i think first thing first you need to really build the mindset of a consultant and the mindset of a consultant is that of someone who looks for solutions to problems and does not concentrate a lot on the problem 
i think more often than not we always concentrate on a problem oh this happened this is not working out whatever uh, but how do i make this work is not what we look at but as a consultant you have to look at the how not at the what right what is something that's the problem that's presented to you how are you going to make things work that's the shift in mindset you have to bring so even before building on your technical skills practicing case interviews building a uh, <clears throat> i would say problem solving acumen first thing is your mindset shift change your mindset from looking at the what of things to the how of things that's number one number two i think uh, your initial screening will be based on an aptitude test no matter which consulting firm you want to get into so make sure that your basic mathematical concepts from 8th grade to 12th grade are very clear all your speed distance time ratio and proportion compound interest simple interest these sums that we solved using formulas uh, your logical reasoning should be good right all these missing number patterns or uh, yeah missing number series and those pattern series figure out which is the next one these questions that we solve as a part of you know olympiads and nsos that you take part in all of that i think it's very important that you practice a lot around those questions have a good basic grammar should be clear because every aptitude test will have a verbal reasoning section data interpretation section where you should be able to analyze data and come up with insights so you should be able to look at a bar graph or a histogram or a pie chart derive insights from it and answer a couple of series of questions so that way you will clear the first barrier which is the aptitude test apart from that group discussions where your communication skills how you work and behave in a team your confidence your emotional intelligence is judged and how you react under stress because you're given a sudden topic uh, under the sky given 30 seconds to think about it and you're put into a group where everyone has differentiating opinions right you might say that oh i'm for the topic that uh, you know cryptocurrency is the next big thing right and it's going to replace let's say your normal fiat currencies right but uh, some people in the group might not agree to it so how do you react under those situations do you get very angry do you get irritated do you get agitated they judge all of that so i think uh, stay up to date with the news practice a lot uh, with your friends with your colleagues whoever you're comfortable with for group discussions and i think then you have like a technical interview round wherein just know your resume in and out know everything what's on your resume your projects uh, your work experience the skills that you mention any skill you mention whatever proficiency level you mention be sure of it if any questions asked to you around it you should be able to answer it you can't just mention tableau because it's a very up and coming data visualization tool and every consulting firm or every company is appreciating you knowing how to work with data visualization tools you can't just mention it because they might ask you <coughs> questions they might ask you <coughs> how to build a dashboard on it etc so the point is anything on your resume you should be able to answer questions around it and then for your behavioral and hr interview rounds you should just i would say be yourself be authentic keep some stories ready which are relevant to your experiences right in your college in school uh, any conflicts you had because those are the kind of questions they ask they ask you that tell me about a time when you had a conflict with your team and how did you handle it so try to have some incidents in your mind during school or college or during an internship where you had a conflict with the boss or with the team how you handled it so that way just keep some stories and incidents ready in your mind because then uh, because they want to listen to your story not a copy pasted answer from google everyone knows you can get certain pointers and everybody is using the same answers don't do that make your make the answers your own that is what the recruiter is looking for and i think that should be more than enough just practice a lot for your aptitude tests and be very confident work on your communication skills that's important right like, that's very insightful i mean i'm sure this will really help a lot of people you know who are aspiring to get into the consulting jobs because a lot of people do get into the consulting jobs after engineering like most of the companies yeah. do take like like tcs does a mass hiring and infosys does mass hiring in the consultation firms only so i'm sure a lot of people will find these tips very helpful so i guess this would be my last question to you can you tell us what's the scope and future of consulting sure um so i think um we only look at the management consulting domain from the corporate perspective like i've been talking about big fours big three so many other names but i think a lot of people forget to understand a consultant is anybody even now although i'm not working with kpmg i am a consultant because a consultant is anyone who is solving a problem for somebody i as a, a you know content strategy and 
uh, video production consultant, help a lot of startups uh, in the ed tech space and a lot of individual clients with building a good content strategy. I help them with their videos. I partner with ed tech startups as a trainer. What I am doing is solving a problem for them because I'm providing learning to their learners, right? And that's how their business model will work. If they don't have mentors, it cannot work. So the point is consultants are not just people doing consulting jobs in the corporate. I want to just bring this out that freelance consultants who could be consultants in any field. You have got marketing consultants, brand consultants. You've got freelance video editors who are consulting people to become better video editors. Those people are consultants as well, uh, right? Um, you've got all your coaches in a way, right? Life coaches, health coaches, they consult people. What do they do? They take consultation calls. They help you become better, fitter, whatever. So uh, that's also consulting. And the scope in general of consulting is immense because see, problems are something that are always around us, right? Consulting, that's why it's all often compared to entrepreneurship. People say, if you've been a consultant, uh, you have the traits of being a good entrepreneur because what you do majorly as a consultant is solve problems. And what does an entrepreneur do? He or she takes up a problem, takes up a problem and they solve it. So I think problems will always be there around us. And that's why the demand for consultants will never go, right? It's just that with time, consultants will have to become more tech savvy. So I think the demand for more technology oriented consultants, like I was in a pure tech field where I was work, although I didn't have to code, but I had to understand a complete ERP cloud software. I had to understand what's going on at the back end. What are the features, functionalities? I had to also work with the technical consultant and help them understand what feature do I want to implement and customize and then go through the code and check if it's okay. So understanding of code, programming languages and tech is important. And that's what the future of consulting is going to look like. Um, and yeah, I think there's a lot of scope, majorly in financial consulting, tech consulting and strategy consulting. These are the three fields where there's going to be a lot of demand and they are booming and there's a lot of scope. Yeah. Right. So I guess that's it for the questions that I have, Dharya. Thank you so much. It was really, really great talking to you and all the answers that you gave are very insightful and informative. I'm sure everybody who is watching this session learned a lot from you. And a special thanks to everyone who was watching this session. Uh, you can connect with Dharya on LinkedIn and you can follow her YouTube channel for, you know, like all the updates. And I'm sure she'll be more than happy to help somebody if they want to you yeah, know, yeah. Like, reach out to her. So Anytime. that's great. Thank you so much, Dharya, uh, for taking our time from your schedule. And it was lovely having you here. Take Thank care. you so much Bye -bye. for having me. Bye. Thanks.